Hey there, California 27. It's Congressman Mike Garcia. I'm out here in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, what we affectionately call the swamp. Some people have been offended by the term swamp. It, it actually was a swamp. That's why we call it that. There's some swampy people here as well. But uh, it's our beautiful nation's capital. Proud to be here this week serving, voting. Uh, I wanted to update you on a few pieces of legislation and some of the stuff that's happening in, here in D.C., but also back in the district. I'll be flying home uh, uh, today and uh, be home over the weekend uh, and next week at, in, uh, in the district. Uh, I had the opportunity to do a, uh, a pretty cool event with the U.S. Chamber of Con uh, Commerce, and it's called the Common Grounds. And what they do is they bring members uh, from each party, Republican Party, Democrat Party, together to talk about issues that we can agree on, which is uh, a novel thing, right? Uh, and something that uh, I've been very passionate about is this Prop 47 issue in California. As you know, Prop 47 turns felonies into misdemeanors and then misdemeanors into slaps on the wrist. And because of that, we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, petty theft and uh, these smash and grabs and small businesses getting robbed pretty much on a daily basis in some cases. Well, I had the opportunity to uh, speak with a good buddy of mine uh, from the Democrat side of the, of the aisle, uh, Jimmy Panetta, who's a, who's a He's a Democrat. We don't vote the same way on every issue, but he's a rational guy. He's a former Navy officer himself. Uh, and uh, we talked about the solutions moving forward. And so it was very refreshing, uh, I think, for everyone to hear uh, from both sides of the aisle that Prop 47 is at the root cause of some of these smash and grabs and these, uh, these, this, rot, this rise in, uh, in crimes. You should be treated like felonies. And uh, frankly, Prop 47 is also at the root cause of the homelessness issue because Prop 47 prevents judges from actually requiring people to get drug rehabilitation and mental health uh, uh, treatments that they actually need. Uh, so rather than getting them the treatments, they just get sent back on the streets and they just get recycled and, and ultimately they, they don't get arrested at all because uh, we don't have the, uh, the, the, the manpower within our sheriff's departments to do this, uh, you know, wash, uh, rinse and repeat type thing. So uh, go check that out. We've posted that uh, interview with the Chamber of Commerce and uh, Jimmy Panetta from California as well on uh, previous social media sites. But uh, uh, there are bipartisan efforts to help uh, solve crime, and uh, we've got to we've got to revoke this Prop 47 this fall in the, uh, during the election cycle. Uh, I want to also uh, highlight that uh, we passed uh, on the floor this week uh, a bill called the Save Act. This is HR 8281. Uh, SAVE is uh, an acronym for Safeguard American Voter Eligibility. And as you know, this is something that I've been an advocate for. I have my own bill, which uh, requires effectively uh, uh, every voter in a federal election to have some form of uh, voter identification, okay? Um, and what's, what's ir ironic about this is 70% of the states already do require some form of ID to vote. This isn't some high bar that, that the average American can't get over. This isn't, this isn't discriminatory in any way. It's actually offensive to me when people say, hey, this is a discriminatory. Uh, you know, just because the color of my skin is darker than someone else's doesn't mean I, I can't get an ID. That's, that's actually ridiculous. So it is a rational and reasonable expectation that someone can not only show up to vote, but prove who they are when they vote. Uh, and so California is one of the few states that don't require an ID. Um, the bill also requires uh, all states to remove illegal residents who are not American citizens from the registration rolls. Uh, and there are actually some states uh, and, 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 and Washington, D.C. itself that actually do have illegal Amer uh, immigrants on these uh, voter registration rolls. So, uh, the, the, again, this is common sense. Uh, this is stuff uh, as Americans, we have a right to vote. Uh, if you're not an American, you don't have a right to vote in an American election. And, and if you are voting, you should be able to prove who you are before you vote, just so that we're, we're, we're protecting your vote as much as uh, anything else, uh, but especially uh, the integrity of the election. So that passed on the House floor. We'll see if the Senate takes that up, uh, but uh, it passed uh, with a pretty wide margin. Uh, I want to talk to the folks out in uh, Acton. Um, we, there's this uh, BESS, uh, and I, I've talked about this a few times, uh, but we had a little bit of a victory here this week uh, on this topic. Uh, BESS uh, facilities are these, these big battery energy storage systems, these massive uh, lithium uh, battery capacity facilities. I'm not generally opposed to storing uh, electrical power in this manner, but in the case of Acton, they put it right on the San Andreas Fault. They put it right under these uh, massive uh, uh, high power transmission lines. They put it right next to the 14, right next to a railroad and about three miles away from the, the, the dam that holds all the water for the Anahoe Valley. So it's literally the worst place in the country to put one of these facilities. 
And one of the reasons, the primary reason it was put there is because of the county who screwed up. Uh, the supervisors, their administrators, their advisors, uh, frankly allowed uh, the location to be uh, settled on Acton right here on the San Andreas Fault uh, at the worst place ever. Uh, but another uh, secondary reason for this is that at the federal level, there's, a, there's an environmental uh, uh, lever that the Department of Energy has that allows um, some of these environmental processes to be expedited and bypassed to get around what would normally be environmental regulations for something like this. Uh, so this week in the appropriation uh, bill, uh, I, I, I introduced a measure that would effectively prevent the federal government from fast tracking these facilities and forcing them to actually look at the locations that they're putting these, these battery storage and capacitor facilities at before they just rubber stamp it. Uh, and I'm proud to announce that that uh, actually did pass uh, in the appropriations uh, uh, energy bill. So that's a, that's a, a big win. We've got to keep fighting this uh, location in Acton. Uh, this doesn't solve that problem, but it hopefully mitigates and prevents it in the future. Um, for uh, a lot of folks uh, working at JPL, I know a lot of folks were just recently laid off uh, because of the Mars sample recovery. JPL is not in our district, but a lot of the employees that work there uh, actually are uh, living in our district. Um, and so uh, I'm happy to, to say that uh, within the Commerce, Justice and Science Appropriation Bill this uh, week, uh, we were able to secure $650 million, which is about $350 million more than what NASA was baselining to. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, NASA uh, and, the, and the programmers uh, uh, on the science side and, and administrator of NASA, Bill Nelson, does the right thing here, hopefully keeps JPL uh, whole uh, and prevents future layoffs. Uh, we, we have shown him uh, that we are marking to a higher number. Uh, so the, the folks that work there and around there, you, you've got my commitment uh, that we'll continue to fight this uh, very important fight. Uh, we can't afford to lose more jobs at JPL. Uh, that bill also had my uh, CERO Act, uh, A-C-E-R-O, uh, which boosts uh, the drones and uh, the, uh, the, the unmanned uh, technologies around uh, the, the fighting of uh, wildfires. You guys are seeing fires all over the district right now. It's going to be a terrible fire season. Uh, if you haven't seen the legislation, we'll put a post together that shows what we're doing at the federal level to help the, fi the wildland uh, firefighters who frankly aren't getting paid enough. Uh, but uh, the uh, Fire Weather Development Act that we got passed uh, through the House already that brings more technology to the firefighters at all levels. Uh, but uh, we've, we've got to treat these wildfires uh, like combat, frankly, and give all of the resources to our firefighters at the federal, local, county, city, state levels, all the resources. Uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, uh, Fireman uh, Pontius a, a few weeks ago in a, a completely tragic uh, accident. Uh, but this is a real threat. Uh, the wildfires this year are going to be, uh, unfortunately, probably worse than we've seen in the last three years. So I um, want to let you know that we're going to continue to fight that and uh, make sure that we're getting all the resources uh, to our firefighters. So uh, last thing, casework. Uh, casework, as you know, is always the number one priority. We are here to serve you. My office is here to be an advocate for you, for the IRS, the VA, uh, wh whatever you need at the federal level. We had a, uh, passports are always a problem. Uh, people uh, decide to go on trips and then they forget to look at the expiration date and they realize, oh, oh crap, my uh, passport expires, uh, you know, two days before I'm going on the trip. So we actually had a, uh, a gentleman um, who was scheduled to uh, go on a trip on July 6th uh, and just a couple days before he reached out to us, we were able to get him his passport on July 5th and he was able to go on his trip. So this is the type of thing that uh, if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like it's taking too long as a veteran with the VA or, or uh, passports with State Department, just give us a call, let us help you out, and we'll, uh, we'll get it done for you. So uh, I also want uh, the folks in uh, Val Verde and Castate to know I'm continuing to look at uh, this Chiquita thing very closely. Uh, I went up and visited again uh, just last week. I think you guys all saw that. Uh, this, th there is no good news coming out of this right now, okay? And, I, and I'm, I'm still very adamant that the county needs to do a better job of supporting Chiquita LLC and expediting, uh, not only getting to the root cause, but ending uh, th this issue and, and finding places to take the leachate, uh, to take the, the waste out of uh, the, the reaction site and end this sooner rather than later. So I, I, I think there is worse news to come rather than better news to come. And you've got my commitment that we're gonna keep fighting uh, at all levels. We've got the EPA there, but I want more oversight from the county. And I frankly want the county to support a state of, the emer a state of emergency. That, that should be an easy, very doable do. Um, and uh, there's even local assembly uh, members at, at the state level supporting that. So 
we're all hands on deck here, but we do need the, the county to do the right thing and we've got to get to the root cause of what's happening at the reaction site. It's a physics problem. Uh, I'm, I'm confident we'll figure it out, but I'd rather figure it out uh, within a few months and r rather than a few years. And, and we, need, we need the county to help us do that. So uh, with that, guys, uh, I'll be uh, home in the district uh, for the next week. Uh, God bless. Have a great weekend. Take care.